So we're ready to start. So Cherie, you want to come up? I'll give you the mic. Hey, everybody, in the stand for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Father God, we praise you and we thank you for the freedom and the opportunity to safely gather together here tonight in this place, in the city, county, state, and the nation, and the greatest of your creation. Be our strong arm, Lord, when we fall, as we often do. And be our sure defense now and in the future in this dark and ever increasing evil world. Be our ruler, guardian, guide, and stay. In your word, be our Lord, be our uh, law, Lord. Let us hear and see honesty from all of these. Seek out our support and vote in this most important election in the history of this weakening nation, Father. Please keep all here in your loving care. While here and in your travel, come, Lord, and be with us in our midst as we listen and seek your faith to make decisions. We ask your blessing on this event and all here, and we ask that in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Cherie. Uh, Matt, you lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Matt. Before I do the introduction of the candidates and the moderators, um, on January 28th, I sent out an invitation to the candidates for this forum. At that time, uh, Katie Arrington was not a candidate. She didn't announce for, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks later. Um, we had a bit of dialogue back and forth between the camps, the different camps. Some of the candidates are not in the race anymore. We had had numerous discussions over the last four months. Five emails were sent out since Saturday to reconfirm. Lindsay Piper Loomis, and Katie Arrington both promptly responded to those emails. Nancy Bates did not. Today at 12.35, I get a phone call from the campaign manager informing me she's not going to be here tonight. I would, the understatement would be of the year would be that I was not upset. I was very upset. But I wasn't very upset for me. For Kevin Henley. I was very upset for all these volunteers that dedicated all their time to come here early on a 97 degree day um, and set this all up. And uh, I think most of you would agree it's a beautiful event, isn't it? And I appreciate everybody recognizing those, those volunteers. The people, all the people sent in questions. The Issues and Resolutions Committee, Tony is the chairman of that committee, Rich is on the committee, um, Jessica is here, she's on the committee. These are you, the, you, you are the folks who, this is your event. That's where these questions came from. We received over 50 questions from people on emails, because every time we sent out an update, we got back questions. So we are gonna have a good forum tonight, um, and it's unfortunate that uh, Representative Pace is not gonna be here. It's her law, it's not ours. Um, and uh, we are going to go forward and uh, with it. So I'm going to just kind of lay out the format, but uh, understand that uh, we're kind of taking a hammer and chisel to this thing now because of this late, late change. But we originally were going to go with three rounds of three questions each. Well, we really can't do that now because there's only two. So what we're going to do is we had nine questions and we had three in the appendix, if you will, that just quite didn't make the cut. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through all 12 questions, one, one through 12, and each candidate's gonna have two minutes to address uh, each question, all right? That's how we're gonna do it. And I'm gonna, yeah, Chair, if we have a coin, we could flip a coin and just see who's gonna go first, and then we will, um, it'll just go back and forth after that, okay? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, wait, wait. Our timekeeper. But oh, we, by the way, by the way, uh, we rehired our timekeeper. Uh, Maria is now officially back. Thank you. And just you know, before we actually start with the question, we are going to bring all these candidates up for a couple of minutes to introduce themselves to you and reconnect with you. And then once all the candidates are done, then we're going to go into the question. So, um, this is not even, is this in America? Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought it was in India and Georgia. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, Lindsay, you want to call it? Okay, Katie. Kill. Well, you know what they say, Kill never fails. Um, so, Kill. So, um, you want to go first or last? It's up to you. First. Okay, fine. So, uh, I'm going to keep this for you. I'm going to do the uh, okay, so with that, that's really, um, that's all I have to say, by the way, on what happened today. Um, we'll try to be better off. Uh, better off so not to say anything. I do want to um, introduce some folks and ask you to come up and uh, say a few words. Now, I went through all the registered folks and, and marked down the candidates, but if anybody comes in here late and your name does not get called, is there an alphabetical order? Please come up and see me, and you know we'll give you your couple of minutes here. Okay, so first off, uh, David Bartholomew. Okay. Hey, thank you all. Uh, my name is David Bartholomew. I'm running for Beaufort County Council District Two. If you don't know where District Two is, it's right here. Dogs Hall, Ladies Island, uh, part of Hall Island. Marine Corps Air Station, part of downtown Houston. So one of the main reasons I'm running is because I'm running, I'm, I'm raising the young family here. I have a two-year-old and a three-week-old. My three-week-old is actually in the back of my life. So <clears throat> that's one of the main reasons why I'm running. I want to make sure that decisions on county council are mindful of the future generation. And I want to make sure that we're being mindful of um, Protecting the environment, the things that we love here in Beaver County, and leaving the natural resources in place for the future generations to enjoy. The other thing that I can bring to the table is that I'm an attorney. I work at Schiller and Hamilton on Ladies Island. I don't know if you know where that is, but uh, it's off Sandpoint Road. Uh, as an attorney, I think I can bring a unique perspective to county council. Uh, I know how to research the law, I know how to navigate the law, I understand the inner workings of the, the United States Constitution, the state constitution, the ordinances of, of the city. And of the county and the state law as well. Uh, the other reason, uh, the other thing I can bring to the table is I, I'm an Eagle Scout. And as an Eagle Scout, I believe in public service. For all my life, I have given back to the community. I've served my community. And I, this is just one way that I can give back. And I really think I can bring a lot to the table. And I, I'm excited to be running. And I would be excited to be your, your uh, county councilman. So, uh, June 14th, please. Get out and vote. Uh, we need everybody out there. To, uh, this is a, a crowd that I'm sure is going to get out and vote. So please, June 14th, get out there. Please vote for me. Uh, I think we can bring a lot of trust and transparency back to especially local government. I think we need that here. So if you're happy, if you're happy with the way council is, by all means, vote for the incumbent. But if you know that we can do better, please vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, David. David um, District two. Um, okay, next up is Paul Brown, and Paul Brown is um, a candidate from District Eight, um, partially in uh, Bluffton and partially in uh, Arlington. Oh, just talk. My name is Paula Brown. I am running for Eagle Scout District Eight.
So is that a greater result in Republicans coming in than no I'm not? Taking rent of free election, but it will help you ever since So now I'm from the DC area born and raised, went to Cherry, remember to talk about. And um, I work for under President Ford, under his administration, the Secretary of Treasury, and the Secretary, the Treasurer of the United States. I'm sorry. If you look under dollar bills, you'll see the Treasurer, and you'll see the Secretary of Treasury. Um, I then went on to international banking and has been public accounting with Coopers and Deloitte. And then my husband retired from Washington Gas Company, and we moved here. And we've been here for a total of 15 years. And <laughs> I came back, came down here and realized I wasn't going to get any finance at all. I ended up going back to school at the University of South Carolina Law School and took the paralegal program and became paralegal for medical analysis. Unfortunately, Cigna came down here and they bought the company and they eliminated a lot of jobs. One was mine. Chris left in 2018. I don't know why he left. We didn't we have my gone into that. But, um, my one of my main things is to bring businesses here to Boston. So my like a core healthcare. And I'm not talking low income, low salaries, I'm talking higher salaries. Because the, the and I'm also for affordable housing. We don't have affordable housing here. Sherry and I grew up in Montgomery County, Maryland. Montgomery County, Maryland County bought land and built affordable housing for all the county workers in the county, police officers, school teachers, nurses. If you work in the county, you got to buy one of these beautiful homes for a very low interest rate. I'm out door knocking in the present. I ran up against another person from Maryland, and he's like, oh, I remember that. I mean, there's so many things we can do. And safe roads. I have seen five people killed the 278 in my district. I mean, literally kill. We need to do something about these people running red lights. So I'm proposing, and a lot of people don't like it, but this is what I would like to do. I'd like to put traffic cameras up and $300 fine if you run a red light. If you kill somebody or you hurt somebody, it's a $750 fine. Not to mention the point. That will come to all freaking heart. Now we can build that bridge across the Southern Island. I was out at Mall Creek the other day. Went to Mall Creek, went back to the present, gone like 20 minutes. Three people ran their life in that, that length of time. Think about it. Add it up. $300 a ticket in 15 minutes. That's $900 times four, 3,600 times maybe 10 hours a day. I know, it's a lot of money. What do you think, Sheriff? <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right, guys, that's all I have. Thank you, Paula. Okay, next up is David Head, who is running for uh, Duke County Auditor. By the way, while well, I'm um, okay, no, David Head, okay. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me here to speak. Um, my name is David Cannon. I run for Mr. County Auditor. A little something about myself. I'm um, a one-time uh, Republican. I have served our country over 30 years in the military. I have um, been served as many different presidents. I have been in five different combat zones, shot at numerous times, and I can stand here with no doubt in my mind and tell each and every one of you that President Reagan and President Trump have done the best thing for all the Republican Party. Um, I'm still going to be a master for the business uh, administration at Park University where I graduated uh, summa cum laude. And I have a bachelor's in science where I am uh, a business manager and human resource manager. I also have over six years of experience working in the county office where five years of that was the uh, as the deputy auditor. You know, uh, I look at that is with the time I spent as the deputy auditor, you know, that, that goes to working in the trenches and you get to know the job, you get to know the ins and outs. And there's a lot more problems in there than we really do in this space. I can tell you that. Um, but that's, that's how you get to learn the job. And the 
the previous owner didn't know the job, nor did he uh, do any research and he had his own agenda. And I'm telling you, we can't afford that again because we just don't know where that office is going to go. Um, I'm a bit trade by the state to be an auditor under the rules and responsibilities. I will prevent any undue influence from outside the office um, because there's a lot of people that think they know what they want the auditor's office to be. But, you know, there's a set of laws that the office has to run by, and that's what we follow. Lastly, but least, every election to me is about the same. We're all standing up here doing what? Verbal application. Well, let me give you my application, and I'll tell you how I I'm a lifelong Republican. Mature leader, five years experience in the honors office, where I still graduated the top of my class for MBA. Has experience in all the practice software that the county uses. And trade by the state of South Carolina rules and responsibilities of the auditor. Um, knows and executes, has known and executed all laws that pertain to the auditor's office, state and federal, proven cooperation, customer service, and uh, communication skills. Always looking for more ways to get back to the community. Anybody? I've gone over to Lady's Hall. My family's in one with our neighbors and put on that big Christmas display that everybody likes to come over. We have to take snow and all that. We're the ones that definitely get back to the community. Um, I will not use the office for any special interest, nor will I use it as a stepping stone for another agenda. The office is for the office, for the community, for, you. for the community, by the community. That's what I always say. That's my little bill, because it's all about you. And most important, I think, is I either will work. As a team player or as a team leader, whichever one situation I'm putting, because we got to get the cooperation back in the office. Thank you. Yep, David, that was free. Okay, um, so coming down our list here. Uh, oh, okay. Um, it is with great pleasure and honor that I get to introduce tonight to you, your representative here in Newport in the South Carolina House, Representative Shannon Emerson. It is great to be with you. It's been a brutal session, uh, but you know what, you guys all are making and thank you so much for allowing me to serve. It is an honor and a pleasure, and I could not ask for a finer group of citizens to represent. And I say that with even more oomph and gusto than normal, because we had some really trying pieces of legislation in the past two year session. And you know what Beaver did? Beaver County stepped up. We stepped up. Our grassroots group spoke out. They backed up our delegation. They came to Columbia. They did calls of action. I do not know how much we would have gotten done if it had not been for people. But I also say this: thank you so much back because the government. Of the people, by the people, for the people, work here. Amen. It works here, and it is so strong here. And guys, I've blinked, and it's been 15 years, and people are using that against me. And I, I, I don't want you to believe that I've given up a single minute of my foot on the gas pedal. And if you know me, you know that's true. I hit the ground running in the beginning, and I promise you, I'm not ever letting up. We have one of the most powerful delegations in the state house right now. I'm honored to be an anchor of that group in the house. So I serve on ways and means. Guys, I got the purse string. Yeah, you know what happens when you give the women a purse string? Oh. Um, but the best part about it is that I've got a great team on that. Bill Hartford is also in the house on ways and means with me. 22 year veteran. Of the house and one of the guys in leadership that makes things happen. Tom Davis has his hands on the first rings over in the Senate on Senate finance. The three of us can work out almost any budget scenario. Not always about the, the amount of money, sometimes it's got to be spread around a lot of places, but we get to make decisions. Bill and I are two of eight people in the house who get the first touch on the 
budget and the last touch on the budget. And that's important because Beaufort County has not had that kind of effect on those tax dollars, your tax dollars getting sent to the places you want them to go to Senator what else. And it's about time Beaufort County got counted again. And we're working ourselves as hard as we can bringing back money for education, for our, our parks, our roads. My my budget committee is, is transportation and regulation. Sorry. A billion dollars. That's worth going over three minutes. A billion dollars going to roads this year and doubling our CTC money to Rama County. And I ask you to please send me back to keep working for you. If you've got an extra question, I'm going to be around or most of you have a phone. I love you. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Thanks for all you do. Uh, next up is Alice Howard, uh, our County Council Representative from District 4, and she's a candidate for District 4. Alice? Boy, what an act to follow, but I love following Shannon because I, I believe everything she says, and, and, and she's my inspiration, no doubt. We moved here 31 years ago to paradise. And that's why I want to run again to preserve our paradise. I am very qualified, I think, to do this. I have a degree in planning and I have a master's in public administration. And that's why I want to continue to do this job in District 4. I have done many things since I started in office, but eight years ago, I heard people complaining about stormwater and affordable housing. And guess what? We've still got issues. It's even worse now with stormwater. But I know how to work with people such as Shannon with the Department of Transportation and work with the cities and municipalities to solve some of these problems. I'm a consensus builder. I know how to work regionally. I know how to work with groups. I've been a volunteer in many organizations such as Rotary and Keep You for Beautiful. And you'll see me picking up trash on some Saturday mornings. I love picking up trash. I know that's weird. I like to clean up things. And um, I want to continue to do that for District 4. District 4 has changed a little bit. It, we've lived for 31 years in Mossy Oaks in that part of the district. It includes two of the military installations. And I feel like I can continue to help the military because I worked for over 30 years in environmental and planning with the military. And I know what the military mission is. And it's the largest employer north of the broad. I hate to say that north and south of the broad, but it's one of the largest employers. And my husband and I worked at the air station um, for 20 years. I know how to talk to talk, I know the acronym, and I know how to get along with the military. So, live, work, and play. That's what we love to do in Beaver County. My grandchildren were born here, and I'm doing this for their generation. So, please vote for Alice Howard. Live, work, and play in Beaver County District 4. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, okay, we actually had to split our registration, A, A to L and then M to Z, because so many folks came out here tonight, um, which is great. I uh, just want to recognize Kevin Phillips. Kevin is a uh, councilman in Port Royal on the town council. And next up to speak is Josh Stillett. Josh. Josh is a supporting candidate uh, for District 4. It doesn't take much digging to find dysfunction, lack of communication on county council. My name is Josh Coletti and I'm running to represent District 4 on County Council. I was born here in Buford and for the last nine years I've worked at Lady Bottom and St. Honor Fire District serving our community. And what I learned, after five years I was awarded Firefighter of the Year and promoted to lieutenant. And that was because I learned how to be a leader. And what I mean by that is I needed for the people that I work with to trust me and have confidence in me. No matter what call we went on, they needed that trust and I had to build a relationship with them. And that's exactly what I did. 
So I think that I can bring to the table a better opportunity for leadership on county council and then I currently work as a real estate agent here in Buford mm -hmm. for the last five years. I've represented hundreds of clients and the most important thing that I've found is transparent communication. If you're representing somebody, you need to be able to pass on to them good news and bad news and work together to resolve those issues because the more we work together, even as a community or citizen, the better we are at solving the issues at hand. Three things that are important to me are responsible growth, affordable workforce housing, and public safety. Currently, in the last 10 years, Buford County has grown over 15%. That's an astronomical amount, and that growth has impacted our infrastructure in a negative way. In 2018, they conducted a study that showed over 55% of our community spend more than a third of their annual income on housing alone. And in public safety, our workforce, our essential employees, nurses, firefighters, teachers, sheriff's department, we're short staffed on every front. Our employees are overworked and underpaid. And at the same time, last year, county council decided to vote in favor of more than doubling their salary from $12,000 a year to $27,000 a year. That's fine. But I'm not in favor of that because our essential employees are struggling. And for me, that is a priority. So on June 14th, I'm asking you to vote for me, Josh Galetti, for County Council District 4. Okay, uh, yeah. I want to take a second and recognize Michael Skinner. Michael? Michael is a candidate in Jasper County. He came to visit up here tonight. He is a candidate for treasurer in Jasper County. So. Uh, thank you for playing. Okay, moving down the list. Uh, Tab Tabernet, who is a candidate for District 6. Yeah, yeah. And Tab District 6, which is um, Sun City and kind of New Riverside area. Yeah? I'm Anna Maria Tabernet. Literally no one calls me Anna Maria, so let's just let that aside. On the ballot, I'm listed as Tab Tabernet. That's how I'm known. I am not a politician, never ran for office before. I am a lifelong educator. I have a daughter who's a forensic psychologist at Augusta Regent University. My son is a deputy police chief in Dublin, Ohio. So, of course, I back the blue. I believe in law and order. I'm pretty conservative, always have been. So, I, I worked 30 years in public education in Ohio. Then I spent the next seven years helping math teachers and principals improve instruction. Then I said, yeah, I think I'm going to go live a different life. And I moved down to Sun City. I've been here 10 and a half years, and yes, it's a beautiful place to be, and they welcomed me as an Ohioan down to South Carolina. In Sun City, I've been serving on the board of directors. I'm currently the vice president of the HOA, and I will tell you, everyone uses the same word, transparency, communication, fiscal responsibility. They're great words. They really are. But I have demonstrated it and been committed to those words for five and a half years. If you talk to people in Sun City, they will tell you that. The bulk of my district is Sun City, where the people contribute greatly to Buford County with the largest voting block in Buford County, and we contribute to the economy. And other than being on the board, I'm also the current chair of the Buford County Board of Trustees for the Library. I served eight years on that. We have been fiscally responsible with your money and state money and the impact fees. We just renovated the Bluffton Library using impact fees. We're looking to build a new branch in the Pritchardville area using impact fees to buy the land. So we've been fiscally responsible. I'm, I'm a volunteer, period, I'm not a politician. The other thing I do is I run the AARP free tax program in Bluffton and Hilton Head. We do 1,200 taxes a year free for residents. So why am I going to do, why am I running for council when I have enough to do? My kids always say, I should retire. 
and I am. I'm running for council because it's part of my giving back to the community. As a conservative person, I believe that we need involved communities, strong families, and good schools. I said I'm a lifelong educator, and I want to keep those values for us in District 6. Now, we have some important issues. I've got to watch my time. Um, of course, the growth, as other people have said, south of the broad, it is impacting District 6. We run through Bluffton. We have the 278 quarters issue and 170. The safety issues on 170 are just gigantic. I believe in the attainable housing for our workforce, and I know they're looking at a regional approach. I can work, I know many of the council people from working on the uh, library board. I believe I can work with them and collaborate. I do it on Sun City. So if you vote for me, it's vote for conservatism, trans transparency, communication, and fiscal responsibility. Okay, thank you very much. Let's take a second on a congressional candidate for the impatience that uh, I think it's important that we get all of our local candidates up here. So with that, no further ado, um, Buford County Sheriff, E.J. Tanner. It's great to see all of you. I'm sorry that uh, the debate turned into a woo -woo. <laughs> and I got in, I got into a deal. So he, I mean, that's the pull of JoJo. So I, I got into it. So. And, and Kevin, I didn't think I'd get the first question. I mean, I was sitting in the chair and got the question. So let me respond to that first question. I'm glad, Shannon, I'm glad you're here. We got work for you to do. And I'm glad members of county council or members of county council currently and those that are running heard their comments about the traffic law. Let me, let me add to that. I think a $300 fine is pretty cheap. Okay, Let's make a minimum fine for running a traffic light. Let's make a minimum fine of $1,000. Let's make it a six-point violation. That way your insurance goes up and you can lose your driving privilege for a period of time. If you injure or kill someone running a traffic light or reckless driving, this gives you a 10-year minimum mandatory sentence to prison and a revocation of your driving privilege for the rest of your life. That way you won't take somebody else's life off. Those are definitely things that our General Assembly could help us accomplish. Because they write the laws, and with those laws that are written comes the penalties, and we work with court administration and all those other outlets to make sure that thing goes. Now, it's a whole different story about putting traffic cameras, uh, you know, like the city of Savannah had. It's way more detailed than that. You want a criminal penalty, you don't want a civil penalty. And when you put a camera on a traffic signal, then all you record is the violation and the tag number. The vehicle is not at fault. The vehicle is being driven by someone, and we need to go after the person driving the car. And most often, those cameras don't capture that footage. They just tell you who the car belongs to. They send you a letter in the mail and say you owe them a $100 civil penalty, and they don't care who pays it. But if you don't pay it, then you could have a problem getting your car re registered when the time comes time to do that. But we need to look at the person operating motor vehicle. So let's increase the fine to a minimum of $1,000, just for an infraction. And let's hold people accountable for reckless driving, which includes running red lights. Folks, I think the majority of you know me. I've been serving you as your elected chair of New York County for 23 and a half years. I've been over 40 years in law enforcement. I don't mind telling any of you, and I'm not going to make an excuse, I'm a tough on crime, no-nonsense law man. That's who I am, and that's what I do. I'm an American first chair. I believe in your Constitution, and I believe in enforcing the laws of not only our state, but our county fairly and equitable for everyone. I'm running for re-election. This is my home. I was born and raised here. I love this community. This is my community. This is your community. This is our community, and we're going to make it the safest community anywhere in South Carolina and anywhere in the country. But it takes us working together to get that done. So that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to talk about June 14th. You already know what that date is. I'm 
we're we're hitting the ball out of the park right now. So don't fear about the stock market because we're in bonds and those rates are just astronomical right now. So making your money work for you even harder because every dollar that I can earn for all of us in investments is not coming out of your pocket to the county a local government budget. And last but not least is building on an incredible customer service base with my team. I, I want to tell you, you have the greatest team in the treasurer's office. I'm so humbled and honored to work with them. We have telecommuting staff and we're looking at ways that we can serve you in a more direct manner and be everywhere because you might not want to come to Buford, uh, the Buford office, the Bluffton office. If you have not already tried to pay your taxes online, please visit mybufordcounty.com, our, our campaign is part PSA. It's really and truly my number one expense is salaries, and number two is postage and print. The more you get an electronic bill, the less expensive it is for all of us, and the more reliable the delivery service. So thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to hearing you next. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, Thank you, Chuck. He's Eric Harrison, and Eric is running for South Carolina House District 121, um, part of it in Buford. Eric? Thank you very much. I'm glad I'm not running against Willie Terrell. <laughs> Give me that vote. So, my favorite, I'm just going to say, you know, who am I and why am I running? My name is Eric Erickson. No relation to our great Shannon Erickson. Um, he's been with us for 15 or so years, but I'm a fourth generation law and order guy. We got another law and order guy right over here. I'm, I'm a practicing attorney, and before that, I was a U.S. Army veteran, worked at Eisenhower Army Medical Center in the emergency room, helped over 20,000 patients there. Um, the, the third generation is my dad, who's an officer in the World War II, Mayo H. Erickson. He hated his name Mayo because nobody was named Mayo. But he was named after the Mayo Brothers Surgeons in, in the North Dakota, Minnesota area. So I always told him he should be proud of that name. The second generation of my family is, he was a high sheriff like Tanner here, um, Melvin A. Erickson. He was also a state legislator. And the first generation of my family, he's the one that came here. He was a Chicago city attorney and Chicago judge, Alfred O. Erickson. So that's a little bit of me and my, my background. Uh, why am I running? I'm running against who, uh, the best thing I can say about that guy is he's a do nothing. He is Mr. Do Nothing. If you go on the website and you look at what this fellow has done over the last eight years, He's been a primary sponsor of 21 bills. Only one has passed. And the one that has passed is the, is the holiday that we are now going to have. It's the Penn Center Day. He got that one passed. Um, as another example, this year, out of the 21 bills, three, the last three he did this year, they all failed. And one of them was he wanted to exempt the fishing license fee from anybody under 17 years old. That, that, that's it. Um, he's got another one where he wants Spanish to be the a core subject in our schools. And right now it's an elective, so that failed. He's been trying to get that one by the last several terms. So Mr. Do-Nothing, he's done that one thing out of eight years. I know I can do better. I can't win on my own vote. I've got to have your help. Um, I've never been, you know, elected office before, but I've been on some boards and been on some uh, boards in Port Royal. In fact, Mr. Phillips out there, who's a Port, Port Royal councilman, uh, knows me. So I'm going to wrap it up. I know we were here for the big fight, and I'm going to wrap it up and uh, just say, vote Eric Erickson. Give me a chance. Let's do. Let's do Mr. Do Nothing. A favor and get him out of office. Thank you. Thank you very much.